In the final video of this course, we will discuss third generation concepts for solar cells. The term third generation photovoltaics refers to all novel approaches that aim to overcome the Shockley-Quizer limit, preferable at a low cost. The Shockley-Quizer limit sets a theoretical upper limit for single junction solar cells based on a number of assumptions. Third generation PV challenges those assumptions and aims to go beyond the Shockley-Quizer limit. The learning objectives for this video are to get an understanding of the concepts that challenge the basic assumptions upon which the Shockley-Quizer limit is founded. Those assumptions are that the solar cell consists of one junction with a single band gap energy and that the cell receives one sun illumination. Furthermore, photons with an energy below the band gap energy are not used and absorbed photons can only generate one electron hole pair. Finally, the Shockley-Quizer limit assumes that photons with an energy greater than the band gap energy lose their excess energy due to thermalization. During this course, we already discussed two concepts that challenge these assumptions, namely multi-junction solar cells and concentrator PV. Depending on which expert in photovoltaics you would talk to, multi-junction solar cells and concentrator systems are seen as a part of the second or third generation photovoltaics. In these solar cells, multiple absorbers are combined with different band gap energies. Rather than having a single band gap energy resulting in a large amount of excess energy for high energy photons, the multiple band gap energies reduce the amount of excess energy and therefore the thermalization losses. Those high performance multi-junction cells can be used in combination with lenses and mirrors that concentrate the sunlight. A small solar cell area can then be illuminated by the intensity of many suns. Multi-junction solar cells and the different materials and device structures used to make them are extensively discussed in the PV technology course. The third assumption is that the single junction solar cell is a transparent two photons with an energy below the band gap energy. Intermediate band solar cells and spectral up conversion are two concepts that tackle this assumption. Let's look into these concepts. Conventionally, photons with sufficient energy can excite an electron from the valence band into the conduction band and photons with insufficient energy cannot. In intermediate band cells, energy levels are created artificially in the band gap of the absorber material. Therefore, photons with energies below the band gap can excite an electron from the valence band into the intermediate band. A second low energy photon is required to excite the electron from the intermediate band into the conduction band. The absorption of two photons with energies smaller than the band gap energy can therefore result in the generation of an electron hole pair. Realizing intermediate bands is not an easy feat. In such solar cells, a layer with the intermediate states is placed in between the P and N layers. Various bulk materials have been studied for realizing the intermediate states. One major problem of these cells is that the voltages are lower than those of the reference cells without an intermediate band structure. One possibility that is under investigation for realizing intermediate band states is to use so-called quantum dots. These are small spherical nanoparticles made of semiconductor materials with typical diameters of only a few nanometers. These semiconductor particles still behave like a semiconductor material. However, due to the so-called quantum confinement, the band gap of the semiconductor quantum dots can be larger than that of the same semiconductor in a bulk configuration. The band gap of the quantum dots depends strongly on their size. 
At a diameter of 6 nanometers, for instance, the particle has a relatively small band gap energy and already starts absorbing in the red part of the spectrum. As the particle size decreases, the band gap energy of the nanoparticle increases. The conduction and valence band edges become less well defined, however, and some energy states occur in the band gap as indicated by the black lines. This behavior enables interesting opportunities for band gap engineering. Quantum dots are therefore investigated for several third generation concepts. But how can these quantum dots be used to create an intermediate band? This figure shows the band diagram of a bulk material. We now integrate a quantum dot with a low band gap energy with respect to the bulk material in the bulk matrix. At the position of the quantum dot, energy states will be present in the band gap of the bulk material that an electron can occupy. So what happens if we integrate a number of these quantum dots? Let's extend the band diagram of the bulk material and position a second quantum dot near the first one. This quantum dot will also create energy states in the band gap. If enough, enough quantum dots are integrated in the material, continuous bands of allowed energy states are formed in the band gap of the bulk material. As a result, the band structure of the semiconductor is effectively changed. The second concept aimed at utilizing sub-band gap photons is spectral up conversion. The main idea of spectral conversion is to add an additional layer to the solar cell consisting of a material that can alter the incident spectrum. The figure shows two low energy photons with insufficient energy to generate an electron hole pair passing through the absorber layer. Spectral upconversion works by combining the energy of these low energy photons into one higher energy state, which can then radiate an upconverted photon back into the solar cell active layer. The upconverting layer should be placed at the back of the solar cell to prevent the parasitic absorption of photons with an energy above the band gap energy. Further, Placing the upconverter layers at the back prevents them from being irradiated by high energy photons, which might reduce their lifetime. <coughs> Two distinct material systems have been employed to produce photon upconversion for solar cells. So called triplet triplet annihilation upconverters use organic dyes with rationally ordered energy levels. These upconverters operate at shorter wavelengths between about 500 to 800 nanometers. On the other hand, rare earth upconverters, which make use of atomic transitions within lanthanide ions, work in the region around 1500 nanometers. Both approaches have already demonstrated an enhancement of the solar cell efficiency. We have now discussed some techniques that utilize the energy of sub band gap photons. There are two more assumptions to tackle. We will therefore continue our discussion of third generation PV concepts in the next video.